In this video, I'm going to show you what to do if your website just shows a blank screen. So I have just noticed that my website finderblog.net just showing a blank screen like this. I can try refreshing it again, but I'm pretty sure the same thing will happen. There is no error message. So what can we do about this? First thing you can do is to right click, uh, depends what browser you're using. If you right click and view the page source, you see uh, no source. So nothing is being returned from the web server. Another thing you can do is check the robots text file. If you've got one or an image or some other static file. So you see that the web server is actually returning non-dynamic content. So it's returning a text file. You could also check with an image file. Just make sure you use one that you know the path of. One other thing you can do if you're using Firefox or similar browser, you can press inspect, is it? Yep. And go to network. This is the developer tool bar. So if you refresh it now, you should see what's being returned from the web server. Let's see if it returns anything. Okay, so it's returning a 200, but if you look here, you'll see it's just for the fave icon.ico, the icon file for the website. It's not actually returning anything from the actual web page itself. So sometimes if your website is broken, you'll get a 500 error, but here we're getting nothing, nothing at all. So what else can we do? Let's have an investigation. So another thing you can do, if you have multiple websites being hosted on the same server, then you can check to see if they are actually working. So I've got a website called Find a Forum. Yep, so this one is up and running. Uh, let's try Find a Channel as well. Okay, so these are working. So mysteriously, it is only Find a Blog that's not working. Depending on your web hosting company, you can usually log into a control panel. Uh, here my host is using Plesk. This is a very common system for managing IIS. So let's log in and see what is going on. So the first thing I recommend to do if you are having the blank page issue is to go into the application pool and restart it or recycle it. Where exactly this is in your own control panel, I'm not sure, that kind of depends on your own hosting company. But here we have a dedicated IIS application pool for website. And ah, you see, it's off at the moment. This is because I was trying to fix it earlier. So first, make sure that your application pool is running uh, sometimes it takes a little while to start. Okay, so now we know the application pool is running. Let's have a look at our website. Is it running? No, it's still not running. And usually with the application pool, you can either stop it and then start it again or recycle, which is just to uh, stop and then restart it again. So we will do that, see if that works. Okay, so it says the application pool was recycled. Press F5 to refresh. But no, it doesn't look like the website is working. Right, what else can we do? Another thing you can do, and not all web hosts may support this, but there is a failed request tracing thing. Uh, you might be able to turn it on in IS itself or through the web config, but here you can do it through Plesk. So let's go on here. So I did actually start this uh, yes, before yesterday when I was trying to investigate this issue. So you can start and stop tracing. It's quite resource intensive, so it's a good idea to turn it off again. As it says here, it will turn it off automatically. 
So let's click on one of the files. And what do we see? Anything here? Ah, we see a 500 error message or status code rather. This means that something is wrong with our website. Well, obviously we know that already, but this may give us a bit more information. And there is a lot of information here. Um, so sometimes if there's lots of information, you might not necessarily actually see anything useful. Uh, there's an awful lot of information here. Uh, don't worry if you can't read this, but all I can say is that I don't see anything obvious in this file. So using FTP, I downloaded the two critical files for a .NET Core application. These are the web.config file and the appsettings.json file. In the web config, it's a good idea to check that things are right. Two things that could be wrong are this here and this here. So the first thing is to check the handlers and sometimes you have to get rid of the v2 here, but sometimes servers prefer to have the v2 here. So this is one thing to check. I'm pretty sure this isn't a problem on my own website because I just fixed this recently. The other thing is if you have multiple websites, sometimes you might actually upload the wrong web config. So make sure that in the ASNET core process, uh, I think it's just ASNET core here, uh, make sure that the DLL is the right DLL and the path is right. And anything else here, not really anything. Um, the log, the std out log file is often useful because this can correspond to the output f uh, folder on your web server. And these were actually the files we were looking at earlier with the tracing. So the tracing is obviously working. The other thing to do is to check the app settings.json. Uh, I won't actually s show that on screen because it's got my database connection strings in it. But just if your website connects to a database, uh, one of the most common problems for a 500 error or blank screen could be that the database is inaccessible. So double check those connections as I have done earlier. Another thing we should do is to make sure we've turned debugging on. Uh, this can be quite problematic in IIS because there are so many different ways of actually turning it on. I check it is on. I think this is ASP.NET settings. And here we are. Yep, yeah, so switch on debugging. There is an option here. And is there anything else? No, I don't see any other debugging session. Uh, I don't see any other debugging things here. You might need to turn off the custom error settings if your application shows custom errors instead of like the actual error description. Uh, I don't have any of these, so I don't need to turn that off anyway. I've just seen another thing I could try and just if you are doing an ASNet or ASP.NET.Core application, just make sure you're running on the right version of .NET. Let's check this. So my website is quite recent. I rebuilt it in 2021. So it's using uh, 4.8. So we're definitely using the right version and not 3.5 of the framework. So that's another thing we could check. So now we're going into the actual website itself and we need to make sure that debugging is on. It's actually much easier to debug an application if it has been compiled in debug mode. So what I'm going to do now is to press debug in configuration. So when we publish this website again, now it will be built in debug mode. So I will upload that to the server and see if that gives us any additional debugging information. So now FTPing up the debug 
version of the website and see if that will give us some additional information. It's a good idea to turn on debugging if you're having problems because it will then hopefully give you the line number of the error. It will also give you some extra additional information. One other thing I say is that if you've done a significant rebuild of your site in .NET Core, it's best to upload all of the uh, code files again because there may be a library that you haven't uh, thought about. It might be other files that you have to upload. So once the files are uploaded, we can start the application pool. Let's see if the website's working now. It's not looking very good. Ah, debugging a website is so frustrating. However, I have actually made some progress. I realized that there might be a problem with my code and in a minute I'll show you what I did. But now you can see that I'm actually getting an error message. And here we see that there's a problem in line 660 of one of my lines of code. So this is very, very useful and I'll show you what I did to get this far. I have several websites that are all directory sites. So if you have several websites and one of them is breaking, then it's a good idea to ask yourself what is different about this site that is uh, not different with the others. So on Find a Blog, people can actually log into the site. And originally when I was building the site, I had terrible trouble getting login authentication to work with uh, .NET Core. I'm still quite new to .NET Core and they've made authentication very, very complicated. So one file you should definitely look at if you're getting 500 errors or blank screens is the startup.cs file. So this is a file that handles all kinds of routines when the application itself is starting. Um, if you get a blank page, then you've exhausted all the other options, then there's a very good chance there's a problem with this file. And how did I fix this one? In my particular example, I actually added this app.useDeveloper exception page. I realized that it wasn't being actually called, although it does have a section here, M is development then it should use it. If not, it does something else. Um, I don't fully understand this part here. Uh, I think this comes with it when you build a new project. So anyway, I put this in and now it is showing the error pages. Um, I found some huge problems with startup.cs. Uh, I know, for example, that use authentication and use authorization must be in the right order. And there can be a lot of other issues with this file. Um, it's just like the web.config file. If you're getting a blank page or the application itself won't start, then the webconfig or the startup.cs files are the two ones that you should really scrutinize. So once you're actually getting error messages, it's obviously a lot easier to fix the website. So let's go into blog repository line 660. So now I've found out it's a database error. So I had a good idea that I could run my website locally. It actually connects to the same database as the live server. Uh, too smaller operation to have a test database and a live database. Okay, so you can see we got a object reference. Uh, the data set is null. So this looks very much like our database connection is broken. Okay, so now I know this is definitely a database error. And if there are database errors with your application, there's a few things to check. Uh, something I found very suspicious is that I can't actually log into the database using the database login and password that's in the connection string. 
I positively know that this is the right server and also the login username and password are correct. So in my hosting, there's a section for databases. If you use Plesk, there normally is. And this lists my SQL servers. And I've noticed there's a check-in repair thing here. So let's try that. Ah, so there is a problem with our database. Let's see. So we clicked on its status and yep, so it says the database cannot be opened because it is offline. That's very strange. So I'll click on repair, see what happens. And now it says it's repairing. Ah, it says unable to repair. Uh, this is ominous. So I'll try it again. Okay, this is looking up. Now it says it has no errors, so let's check the website again. Press F5. Ah, the website is back, so I have actually solved this particular problem. I will give you a couple more tips. I would say it's very handy to search Google and try and include as many keywords like blank page, um, everything uh, stack overflow i still think is the most useful website if you're trying to debug things i found this article on stack overflow which was very useful in helping to get to the bottom of this problem so this one told me to look at my startup.cs and make sure the line about the developer exception page was there uh, where is it yeah there was Actually, there is only like one answer with only one upvote and the English was a bit cryptic on this, but I saw this use developer exception page, which seemed to be what I had to make sure was on and actually activated to make sure I could see the error messages. So anyway, my website is back and it turned out to be a database problem rather than a code problem. I hope you found this video useful. It's really important to know how to troubleshoot problems if you're a developer, even if you're not the server administrator. And I would say that uh, because uh, this is one of my own sites, um, it is actually very useful to have your own sites, um, especially if you're learning IS or you're building web applications because uh, I have solved so many problems on my own websites that I've never actually encountered during my day job. Thanks for watching.